In this video, we'll be looking at the match mode operation of the LPC timer counter. So basically the idea is you want to get an interrupt when the value specified in a particular register becomes equal to either your timer or the counter. So basically uh, match mode can be used either in timer mode or counter mode. So if you look at a sample application, uh, suppose you are putting some tablets into a bottle and you want to say a fixed number of tablets in a bottle, say 50. So after putting 50 tablets, uh, you need to get an interrupt. So we can have a similar setup like our a mouse with a sensor at the light source to get pulses from external world and when the timer counter in this course he will be uh, of course running as a counter when the counter value becomes 50 uh, you will get an interrupt same way if you want to create a wave a square wave of period say one millisecond or something uh, you will calculate the number of peripheral clocks or timer counter clocks required to get uh, that much delay and you put it in the register and when the timer value matches with that value uh, you will get an intro okay so at that time you can uh, toggle a bit uh, that is one way or optionally uh, the lpc timer it also allows you to change some output pin uh, when a match happens between this timer counter and the register where you are storing your record value that's also supported so we'll be seeing all of them so basically, uh, these are the steps. First of all, depending upon timer counter, uh, which one you want to use, you can enable them. Timer zero or timer one, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to use timer zero, so this step I can skip. This one uh, is an optional step. So as I mentioned, when the value in the timer counter matches with the value that you specify in a special register called the match register, you can create some external event. If you want to create that, uh, under that cases, you will have to configure your pin cell register to enable those pins as match output instead of GPIO. So timer zero, you can have two output. Timer one, you can have two output. Timer two, you can have four of them. And timer three, you can have only two of them. So internally, we have four match registers. That means you can configure up to four different values in these registers. Uh, under which you get an intro when the value becomes same as the value in the timer counter. But to the pin, uh, not all of them are connected. So timer 0, timer 1, timer 3 out of 4 registers, only 2 are connected to the physical pins. But for timer 2, all 4 are connected to the physical pin. But internal intro, you can configure for up to 4 matching cases. So next, you will have to configure the PCLK and prescale if you don't want the default values and you want to run it in a timer mode. So here, my first aim is to run it in counter mode. Uh, that means I'll be giving some external signal and this external signals will be coming through the capture pins. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, there is no separate pin through which the external events will be coming when you are in match mode. The external events will be still coming through the capture pins. And I'm planning to use it as a counter. So these external events, they will be acting as the clock. So I don't worry about these two things. And configure count control register if you want to run in counter mode. Yeah, I want to run in counter mode. So this step I will do. So let me uh, start from our previous code, input capture, and we'll start modifying from there. So here you have already configured the pin cell. Uh, so that capture 0, 0.0 of timer 0 is enabled that we still need here you are configuring intra for capture interface okay but in this case we just want this capture input as a clock we do not really want to capture it so we don't want this line we don't want to configure the capture control register but ctcr register uh, we need to configure we have already seen our CTCR, that's where you configure the clock. By default, it is timer, but my plan is to use it as counter. Here, you enable the particular capture interface, but again, we are not in capture mode. This is used only as a clock. So this, you keep it as uh, zero itself. And this bit will make to one, so that we use the rising edge of the signal coming on the capture pin as the clock. So that we can write. So we can write as timer zero CTCR is this one, we will over it with one so that the lowermost 
bit become zero okay so next we have to configure this match control register okay so you have many options here uh, you can enable interrupt that means wherever a matching happens you will get an interrupt you can see we have four sets of three bits each because we have four match registers for each time encounter so this bit will give you an interrupt whenever a matching happens so of course we will set it although we don't have an interrupt service routine we will still work in a polling mode but we will definitely set this to one reset on match register zero means if a match happens your timer counter will be reset to zero and he will again start counting from zero okay that's a good feature because if i want 50 tablets in every portal uh, after i fill the first portal i need to count again from zero that makes uh, more sense otherwise i will have to change the match register value to 100 so that next time i get the intro uh, when the total number of tablets are 100 and 50 in the second bottle instead of that it is better i get an interrupt after every 50 and the counter starts from zero after giving each interrupt so this bit will also will make it one uh, stop on match register that means your timer counter will stop once the match happens uh, we may not want this because let it be continuously running but it is not free running okay once it reaches a value it resets to zero and goes from there again uh, but this one he will make him to stop and you will have to go to the tcr register timer control register and set the start bit to restart him again so we don't want this one and i am planning to use only one uh, match register only single value matching so i'll set only uh, these two bits so let's go ahead and do that so in your header file you can see timer zero match control register that's what we want to change so we will take it and we will over it with three so that the lower two bits become one so we are enabling interrupt and we are saying like he needs to restart from zero after each interrupt next you can set the match register itself so here you can see we have four match registers for each timer counter uh, as i mentioned not all of them might be connected to physical pin but internally we have four registers I'm planning to use only one register at a time and here you can configure uh, at what value we need the comparison operation to be successful and you want to get an intro let's say like five you can put any 32 bit value there and he will be always comparing this value with the tc value and whenever there is a match we will get an intro okay so only this much is the basic requirement after that you can start it and he will be running and as I mentioned, we don't have interrupt service routine, although we enable the interrupt here. Uh, we will be in the polling mode, so we will be still looking at timer zero interrupt register to find out any matching happened or not. So if you look at timer zero interrupt, this bit zero, now you can see these four are for match registers. We are using match register zero. So this bit we will have to monitor. So if this bit becomes one, that means there was a matching on register zero so let's compare whether that is zero so while okay it is a uh, rightmost bit so we will just add it with one when there is no need to right shift here okay so if this one is zero we will stay in the while loop once a successful matching happens okay let's say like if a matching happens i will toggle a gpio pin so that I can see like the matching is really happening physically. So if we toggle a GPA pin after each match, it will be toggling. So you'll be able to see some kind of uh, rectangular wave. It won't be a square wave. Uh, you can make it square wave. If you uh, match exactly at the same time, you press the button at the same time, but uh, most probably it will be simply a rectangular wave. So I will make some signal high and low. This time let's try to use our fast interface so we don't need any of these this time and i'm planning to use bit zero of port zero in fast mode so first let's configure the ses register for that you need to make the system control status register bit zero to one if you want to use the fast mode because i want to change only one pin so i want to mask the remaining pins and this masking is available only in the fast mode Okay, so that's the basic reason. So FIO zero direction, 
I'm setting all output mask is not applicable to direction remember then FIO 0 mask I'm setting it as 0x f f f f f f f e that means every bit except the rightmost bit is masked so when I write to this pin register only the rightmost bit will get changed that's what I mean okay so here what I will do once I get an interrupt yeah of course we'll have to Acknowledge that interrupt for that you have to write back one to the same location. So we can simply say this register is this register and write only to the rightmost bit. Okay, so basically you want to change only the rightmost bit to one or to all other location, uh, you just write zero. So we can simply write this equal to one. That's good enough. Or you take this one and you add it with the uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and or with 1, which is effectively uh, you are just writing 1 to that register. So what I will do whenever I get an interrupt, I will toggle that pin. So I can simply say FIO0 pin equal to, we'll just toggle it. So we'll say like not of this one, but again, remember, because we are masking, when you read that pin value, every bit except the rightmost bit will be zero. And when you write back, it won't change any other pin value except the rightmost bit. Okay, so this is good enough. Oh, right, he's giving a warning like, well, loop has empty mode. Yeah, that's what we want. Let's compile. Let's debug. Okay, we have our timer here. We are going to give the input through P1.26, either fast or slow doesn't matter since we are giving input. Okay, we have that one here and the output is through the uh, bit zero of GPA zero. So it should be somewhere here. So let's run it. I'm running everything together so you can see a timer got enabled. This is the match uh, register. Five got set there. We have enabled interrupt. We have enabled reset our interrupt and our TC is not moving because we are in counter mode and input should come through capture 0, 0.0 which is P1.26. So we have four, five, six. So when I change it here, when I click here, whenever rising edge is there, you can see this TC is changing. So four, five. So now matching might have happened. Yeah, you can see he reset back to zero and you can see here it became high. Okay, so now let's keep on doing it. So you can see whenever a matching happens this output pin is toggling and our timer counter is resetting to zero now it will be easy to see it if we have it in our logic analyzer so we can set up and we need to see okay port 0, 0.0 that's what we are using and we need to configure it as a bit and let's stop everything, let's restart. Sorry, my keel crashed, so I had to restart. Okay, so let's rerun it again. So this time, okay, let's try for five, six. You can see in the waveform, okay, we'll have this pulse. It will toggle whenever the matching happens, okay. Now interrupt happens, so it toggle to one. Now it toggle to low, toggle to high, toggle to low. So the width might not be constant always. Yeah, depends upon when that matching happens. Since it is a counter. Okay, now as I mentioned, our capture it has a provision to create an external event automatically 
when this uh, matching happens here i explicitly wrote like toggle a pin instead of that it has a built-in feature where it can create an external event so the pins on which that can happen they are called the match pins okay so this is for timer zero there are two pins where we can have it so if you want matching uh, you have to again configure the pin cell register so match 0, 0.0 you can see that is also in pin cell 3 our capture 0, 0.0 that is also on pin cell 3 okay so if you look at our code we have already written it as 3 to enable capture 0, 0.0 now we have to enable match 0, 0.0 also so this is uh, 1 1 then 0, 0, so it became 3. So we need this also. This is function 3, so 1, 1, uh, 0, 0. So it will be like 3, 3 here. Now you need to configure what event should happen when a match happens. That provision is also there. So for that, you will have to configure the so-called external match control register. So this register you have to configure only if you are controlling some external pin when a match happens. So here, first of all, you need to enable whether this external match operation even should happen. If that happens, what should happen? That is configured using these two bits. So every match register has two bits. So if you set it to 0, 0, nothing happens. 0, 1, the pin becomes high. 1, 0, pin becomes low. 1, 1, pin will toggle. So let's try pin is toggling. We are using a match register 0 of time account of 0 and this one uh, we will make it to one one so here we need one so it will be one zero 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 one one on zero so it would be like uh, three one so here if you go to the header we have t0 external match register this one that's what we need to configure so I'm changing the same source code. Okay, you could have started in a new file. That's also fine. So we'll make the value of external match register as 31, the lowermost bit. And once we have done, we don't need this toggling. If you enable it, both pins will toggle, but uh, that's not required now. Okay, so let's go for debugging. Now we will set up the logic analyzer to detect the change on uh, match zero pin. Match zero pin is P1.28. Okay, it should be bit type. Okay, so let's run now. And while it is running, let's change the input here. And you can see like that signal will be toggling whenever a match happens. Okay, so this toggling I didn't explicitly code in my C code. This is happening because of the built-in feature like you can have an external even whenever a match happens okay this is how external match works we will try a last thing now we are running in counter mode let's try in timer mode okay so the only difference that i am going to make here is this ctcr i will just keep it at in timer mode i'm not doing any pre-scaling i'm going to run at the default clock of cclk by four other values you can try out and let's check what happens and when i run it this time okay you will see uh, it will be a perfect square wave because now he is waiting for five clock cycles after that he generates an intro and toggles the output so this time it will be a square wave with t on equal to five clock cycles pcl case and t off uh, five pcl case 
So this is where match is working in timer mode. So I hope uh, you have a better idea about timer counter now. Uh, we'll stop the discussion on timer counter here. Thank you.